Hello and welcome to Badminton World from the city of Kuala Lumpur. The big bustling capital of Malaysia is a prominent centre of trade and commerce in the Southeast Asian region. The name Kuala Lumpur roughly translates to muddy estuary. But it's evident that the place has long outgrown this rather modest billing, with more than 7 million residents calling it home. The iconic Patronus Towers is a symbol of the city's growing influence in Asian business. The world's tallest twin towers standing testament to the economic might of this sprawling metropolis. This amazing city was chosen to host the season opening edition of the 2011 OSIM Badminton World Federation Super Series. Badminton is hugely popular among locals and the 56th edition of the Malaysian Open meant that the Putra Indoor Stadium was a destination of choice for hardcore fans. It's a new era. For, for badminton and I think this Malaysian Open, it was Malaysian Open in 2007 that kicked the Super Series off. It was the first ever Super Series event. It was a huge success then. And we're only in the early stages of the Super Series event 2011, but I think it's, it's going from strength to strength. I think it's getting even better and better. Much of the fans' adulation is directed towards Malaysia's very own Lee Chong Wei who will hope to defend the men's singles title that he's won for the last three years. But that won't be easy, with virtually every elite player in the world hoping to take home the prize. Among the high-profile competitors at the year's first BWF Super Series event, China's Chen Jin stands out as one of the strong contenders for the men's singles trophy. Chen happens to be the reigning BWF world champion. The win in Paris, his finest achievement in a year that has brought him great rewards. The world championship win last year has special meaning for me because this is the first individual world championship that I've won. 2010 was a very satisfying year. Our team won the Thomas Cup. I won the World Championship singles title and China won the Asian Games in Guangzhou. But I was disappointed losing to Li Chong Wei in the semis of the singles event. <laughs> Playing his first round encounter against Denmark's Hans Christian Wittengus, Chen is well known for his astonishing court coverage. This approach of wearing his opponents down has meant that Chen has always had to put in the hard yards. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the progress I've made so far. I can see definite improvement in every year that I've been at this level. First, the team championship win at the 2006 Thomas Cup, the men's singles bronze medal at the 2008 Beijing Olympics, and the men's single silver at the 2009 World Championships. And then last year, I won the title. So it feels good when you see sustained improvement every year. Chen's first round match against Denmark's Wittinghus went all the way to three games. Chen winning the last two, 21-16, 21-17, to progress deeper into the draw. Staying with men's singles, Germany's Mark Zwiebler was preparing for his first round encounter with local boy Wong Chung Han. Ranked 15 in the world, Zwiebler is among the foremost European players around. Danish stars like Peter Garde and Jano Jorgensen are still top two in the continent, something Zwiebler intends on changing in the near future. I lost more against uh, them than I won, so I have to admit that they are probably a bit better still, but uh, I think they're in my reach, let's say, and I've got, gotten really close against Peter also, but they have the big advantage that they have a big group of, of good men single players in Denmark, and uh, I think I'm the only player in Germany ranked on the top 80 at the moment, or top 70, so uh, they got better conditions in terms of sparring partner, but uh, I'll try my best to, to beat them. Zwiebler played out a tight three-gamer against Malaysia's Wong. The German winning the last game 21-18 to progress to the second round. Up next on Badminton World.
former world number one, Taufik Hidayat, set his sights on winning the Malaysian Super Series title. Stay tuned. In the BWF men's singles rankings for the month, Lee Chong Wei is number one, followed by Taufik Pidia. Denmark's Peter Gade sits in third, China's Cheng Long fourth. Lin Dan up a spot, as are Busak Konsona and Chen Min Yuan. Chen Jin is down three places, Jan Jorgensen and Bao Chun Lai rounding out the men's top ten. In the BWF women's singles rankings for the month, Wang Yi Han's right up there, followed by Wang Shishan and Wang Jin. India's Saina Newal stays in fourth ahead of Denmark's Tine Baum. In sixth place, Bei Yun Ju, followed by China's Yang Zhao Jiang. Julian Shanks up at eighth, Hong Kong Yip Hui Yin ninth, Ki Hong Yan tenth in the women's rankings. Welcome back to Badminton World. The Malaysian metropolis of Kuala Lumpur hosting the first of the year's Osim BWF World Super Series events. The high profile tournament continued to draw in the crowds, especially with superstars like Taufik Hidayat making it to the quarterfinals. The Indonesian veteran has already done better than his first round exit in 2010. Hidayat looking much more determined this time round. Last year I, I lost first round, so in this year I hope I can more. I mean, like better than last year. Now it's, I'm going quarter final, so tomorrow I meet Kenny Chitago from Japan. So I hope I can win tomorrow and I'm going to semi final and then final or something. It's my dream for this tournament. Hidayat's rival in the men's singles quarter final is a player he's beaten three times before, Kenny Chitago. A finalist at the 2010 All England Open, down five match points against the Indonesian. The 21-year-old Japanese put up a valiant fight. Hidayat simply too good for him on the day. The old warhorse winning 21-15, 21-15. He's going right. Oh, it's not, it's landed in. <laughs> well, Hidiat himself thought it was going wide. Having performed at the highest level for well over a decade now, Hidiat is one of the rare cases of a teenage prodigy living up to all the promise. Having first won the Indonesian Open as an 18-year-old, he's captured every honour worth having in the sport. 2004 Athens Olympic gold and a world championship win in the subsequent year. And now, after more than a decade and a half at the highest level, Hidayat has chosen to cut down the workload and step away from national duty. I moved from national team in uh, 2009, so it's better. I think it's, I like when I stay in uh, national team, but I moved from national team because I want a generation for the young player. Next year, next two years, but I hope can come in the junior from Indonesia. He can change to me. I mean, the on top player or something. So, and then I hope I can go into the next Olympic in 2012. Day four of the tournament was here in no time. The quarterfinal stage already underway. Denmark's mixed doubles pairing of Joachim Fischer-Nielsen and Christina Pedersen prevailing in a marathon three-gamer against China's Zhang Nan and Zhao Yunlai to head into the semis. This time, third time lucky as far as the Danes are concerned. It was all China in the women's doubles quarter-finals. Wang Xiao Li and Yu Yang only one point away from becoming the first of four Chinese pairs to go through. The Japanese duo of Naoki Kawami and Shoji Sato became the first men's doubles pair to reach the semis. And this time they convert, and how fitting that it was Sato who finished it off. He was absolutely outstanding. 
The women's singles event pitted top seed Wang Jin of China against Germany's Julianne Schenk. Wang winning a tight second game to close out the match. And the rest of the seeded players didn't disappoint. Wang Yihan, Wang Shishan and Zhang Yang Zhao completing the semi-final lineup. I had already in the men's singles last four, world number one Li Chong Wei on the far court took on Tian Min Yuan. <laughs> Li needing just 40 minutes to brush aside the Vietnamese player. profile development, China's Lin Dan pulled out of his match against Chen Long. Indonesia's Simon Santosa riding his winning streak into the semis. Over the last decade, the evolution of badminton has taken a new turn, with world-class television exposure playing a crucial role. Former English international Jill Clark has been closely associated with the coverage of the sport for a while now. For insightful commentary, bracing high-profile matches in the BWF Super Series as well. Question, the rally of the match. Great play from all four players. Well, I think where it, uh, I hope it comes across to the viewers is, uh, first of all, my passion for the sport, because having been a, a full-time player, professional player myself, obviously this is the sport I love. Um, also, tactically, I'm able to read the game and able to analyse what's happening. And I think most importantly of all, I know what the players are feeling about on court. A top-ranked women's and mixed doubles player in the 80s, Clark was a vocal spokesperson on behalf of the players in her time. Her knowledge and eloquence making her a natural fit in the commentator's chair. Well, while I was still playing, there was one or two occasions where um, they were showing coverage of just the finals day. So if I wasn't in the final, then I got asked to come in and do the colour commentary to help out and give the experts' point of view. I think also the fact that I was president of the International Babington Players Federation for five years. Um, the people involved in television knew that I had an opinion and that I was willing to share opinions and that seemed a good criteria for moving into commentary. Ian Wright is Clark's co-commentator at the Malaysian Super Series. The former England national coach and current BWF development manager bringing some contemporary analysis to the TV coverage. Jill's my mentor as a commentator. She's obviously got a lot of experience and her first advice to me with the first event I did with her was think like a coach, don't try and be a commentator. So that's what I do. Jill does a lot of the actual commentating and I try to put myself in the coach's role so I can describe tactically what's happening in the game. With the Osim Super Series pitting the world's finest against each other on a regular basis, Clark anticipates some exciting times ahead for the sport. The number of countries really taking badminton seriously and getting funding from governments has increased incredibly, so there's, the competition is much harder, but you only have to look around the stadium here. The, the presentation of the event is absolutely fabulous. It, it looks superb, and, and this is where the BWF and with the OSIM uh, Super Series Tour has, has really taken the game now to, to a new, higher level. Over to the semi-final stage now. Wang Zhao Li and Yu Yang poised for victory in their women's double semi-final against Cheng Shu and Ma Jin. This win setting up a meeting with Zhao Yunlai and Tian King in another all-Chinese final. First time of asking a women's doubles of the very highest quality. In the men's doubles, Mads Konrads Peterson and Jonas Rasmussen facing Japan's Kawame and Sato. The Danish pair emerging victorious to make the final. Still to come on Badminton World, the business end of the 2011 Osim BWF Malaysian Super Series. Some riveting on-court action right after this short break. I'm Raju Yusuf and you're watching Badminton World. Welcome back to Badminton World. 
the Malaysian metropolis of Kuala Lumpur hosting the first of the year's OSIM BWF's World Super Series events. The top four seeds in the women's singles events were all in the semi-finals. China's Wang Yihan facing the number one seed, Wang Jin. In just 35 minutes, Wang Yihan had the match in the bag. Good aggressive play. And Wang Yihan is through to the final. The other semi-final was won by Wang Shishan. Fourth seeded Yang Zhao missing out. The big match, Lee Chong Wei versus Chen Long. The Malaysian number one on the near court looking in superlative form. all over in 39 minutes. Lee making the Malaysian Open singles final for the fourth year in a row. Taufik Hidayat brushed past Simon Santoso to set up a meeting with the highly fancied Malaysian superstar. 28-year-old Li Chong Wei is the toast of a nation that is striving to lay down a development structure for the future. The Badminton Association of Malaysia, or BAM, adopting a very proactive approach to talent grooming. See, we start to identify players uh, while they are from, since they are from primary school itself. And uh, when they reach the age of 13, we will absorb them into our sports school. So uh, they, they will be trained in that sports school, they will eat together, stay together. So basically it is a very centralised thing uh, for the player and they start training together from the age of 13. And uh, after the secondary education, they will be, the good ones will be absorbed into what we call the backup squad. And from the backup squad, if they do well, they will promote to what we call the elite squad. The development of homegrown coaches is also a top priority. Former world number one and current national coach Rashid Sidek setting a great example for other former players. Right now, we have a good lineup of coaches. I think we, we have uh, Rexy Mainaki, we have Hendra One, outsiders, I think. And then the local also, uh, uh, we have uh, former national uh, badminton players. Yeah? So, uh, I think we have no problem about the coaches side. The coaches and the officials constantly brainstorm and constantly review the program. Uh, this will help the coaches to move forward. We, besides that, we also encourage coaches to take up courses like uh, coaching courses, sports science courses to upgrade themselves to ensure that their knowledge is always updated and relevant to modern badminton. Lee Chong Wei is a shining example of how raw talent is being brought to fruition by a system that hopes to replicate its success. World number one and inspiration to every badminton lover in Malaysia. To produce another Lee Chong Wei, I think definitely every party, every stakeholder has to work together. Uh, the government, the sponsors, even Badminton Association Malaysia has to work hand in hand and uh, having a good teamwork and uh, be very, very focused in what we want. Uh, we have to set objective, we have to set uh, some kind of very structured program. The program has to be reviewed constantly by all these stakeholders to ensure we achieve that, that objective. The last day of the Malaysian Super Series brought in the big crowds. The Chinese fans in the stands being treated to the first of the finals. Doubles pairing of He Han Bin and Jin Ma on the near court, fighting off Tao Jiao Ming and Tian King. Oh, indecision! I don't believe it! Her and Ma winning a dramatic three-gamer. That's pushed on. 
the victory. First Super Series title to her hand in and margin as a pair. The women's doubles final was another all Chinese affair. Wang Jiaoli and Yu Yang in the near court playing Zhao Yunlei and Tian Qing, who was in her second match of the day. Tian and Zhao victorious after three hard fought games. Chai Biao and Guo Zhendong were in it for the men's doubles honours. Denmark's Mads Konrads Peterson and Jonas Rasmussen looking at six championship points against the Chinese pair. That's it. Number five seeds Chai Biao and Guo Zhendong secure the Malaysian Open. Super Series event for 2011. Having recently regained the world number one ranking, China's Wang Yihan faced an uphill battle against Wang Shishan, who drew first blood in the women's singles final. In the second game, Wang Shishan won nine points in a row to end up on the cusp of a big win. Yeah, this time. 21-18, 21-14. A comfortable win in the end for Wang Shishan, the Asian Games gold medalist. Taufik had made it through a tough draw to play the final against the darling of the Malaysian fans. Lee Chong Wei riding the crowd's support to win the first game by a whopping 21-8 margin. And it wasn't long before the Indonesian was staring at an imminent defeat. Lee Chong Wei having three championship points. Pushed away. And a fourth consecutive title for the world number one, Lee Chong Wei. His seventh title in total here at the Malaysia Open. Leave you now with some of the best and brightest moments from the 2011 BWF Malaysian Super Series. See you next time.